the opens was on 30th on the first of the next month i started contributing so unfortunately like code bases are extremely complex so there's a combination of uh, lack of learning if you're st struggling to contribute step three might be picking up a beginner friendly issue freelance for another year and a half then i got a remote job google facebook won't hire if you've not if you don't have a basic degree when it comes to remote jobs freelancing your skills are the only things that matters i don't see any downside in preparing for it like you would prepare for an iit je a bunch of times ye sath mein some organization comes and they get a student that they know thoda nepotism hota hai this might be a very tricky question for you or here but do you feel that jsoc is kind of becoming a race for the in community specifically because students are like acha usne kara hai to mujhe bhi karna hai iske ye benefits hai i think it's always always been like that um when i was in college also there was a pretty stiff competition maybe it was limited to like bigger colleges where there was exposure about these things and today everyone knows this thanks to youtube um but in the end it is a competitive sort of a program call it whatever but like there is there are limited number of seats there are a bunch of applicants hence um there will be competition i think that's the case for jobs as well so there's no i don't see any downside in you know preparing for it like you would prepare for an iit je that goes against the ethos of tech bunch of people like get ruffled by the fact ki ha you are competing here as well and you know people especially from india sort of sometimes don't make the best contributions or like a very aggressive on issues which i feel is wrong as well yeah you should be extremely polite and if it goes it goes your reputation is much more like important than you know uh, an internship uh, so just be polite right. and uh, other than that yes it is a competition unfortunately and there are people competing for it and there are limited seats so just like in itj you would you would compete like like you do and that happens in jobs as well so i don't necessarily feel that's bad can jiso actually help you get a remote job i'm asking for students who fail because agar kisi ne crack kar liya to then they get the benefits fine yeah so if agar aapka jiso ka mesle nahi hua because you don't have the skills then it will be hard to get a remote job if you were competing very well with someone else and theek hai he got sometimes jiso ka so a bunch of times jiso ka some organization comes and they get a student in uh, that they know so thoda nepotism wahan ho ha hota hai so if that is the reason you didn't get in totally fine um but i still feel uh, among 100% of the people applying around 80% are lacking like very basic programming skills and are just you know trying to grab issues making documentation changes which which won't get you a job for sure the bachcha wa 20% ka top 2% as long as you are in that top 2 to 5% uh, you are well equipped to sort of you have the right skills to get a job um and then whether or not you get it sort of depends on a bunch of other factors uh, but gsoc can be a little weird and just because you did not make it in and does not mean you you sort of not and someone who might make it into gsoc may or may not get a remote job later on so it's not a uh, necessary or sufficient condition so how to be in that top 2% yeah it's not so this is going to sound very weird but it's not very difficult the reason is Jan, there are like a lot of people but it's still so hard to hire uh, it's still so hard to find good engineers so to your same point uh, you'll find a pool of people who are able to learn um basic things or like basic programming or whatever is available on youtube but then there is some certain point beyond which your personal you can basically see case engineer mein personal motivation bahut high hai he has been struggling he had this kar raha hai pichle kuch saalon se waise log bahut kam hai um people who want to get into the tech into tech just for the sake of it or like more for like ha uh, you know uh, it's a lucrative field wo janta bahut hai and that janta is also not doing the wrong thing because during bull runs everyone gets hired even like if you're mediocre at programming you will be fine uh, but if you, if that top 2% is what you're aiming for you will have to find genuine interest in the technology and not be here been here just for the money uh, and mm, yeah in that top 2% most people that i've seen are basically running behind learning and technology and money is just another outcome acha bhai you have been a freelancer as well and an open source contributor as well so what do you feel is sort of a better path there are pros and cons in both the pros of freelancing are uh, it's usually more high paying than a remote job because you can work with multiple people um you can in keep increasing your rates you're getting short term projects you get a two month project 
meanwhile you got a second project the second guy you can pitch a much higher amount versus it's very hard to sort of keep renegotiating when you're in a remote job the second benefit of remote work is it's very casual so you can do it for a month chill for a month really depends on sort of how you want to prioritize your time the downsides uh, in a bear run it's it's probably the worst thing in the world because you know you have to go through pitching projects every every month every two months and if there is a bear market right now then there aren't a lot of people looking for projects there are a bunch of engineers who are looking for jobs and hence the supply demand arbitrage is not on your side um remote job um benefits they also they also pay well but uh, you're usually employed as uh, like a full time employee where taxes are not as uh, beneficial as if you're a freelancer um as i said the there aren't too many uh, you get like from standard 6 months one year increments but not like every month every two months things uh, you get equity uh, in case you're sort of negotiating your package that way which is great in case the company does well um, and it's a much it's a slightly more not much but like pretty stable job compared to freelancing because you're usually an employee which means all the standard uh, labor laws apply to you uh, well not exactly in india but still like you could you can uh, mostly assume for most practical purposes unless you're like quite quitting um, you you should be mostly okay and you have the probability of you sort of getting fired because of market conditions is, is as much as a fan job um so those are the pros and cons now you decide which one would you go with i when i was young freelancing felt great okay when i was young, like a year ago uh, freelancing felt like a great sort of option because as i said a uh, back then was the bull and during the bull i worked with three clients at the same time i have logged 100 hours and i've seen my sort of hourly go from 30 dollars an hour to like 150 dollars an hour in a span of a year because i was very good at a certain technology um but then at this time um it's probably better to be in a remote job it's slightly safer you don't know where the market is going and the valuations of these companies are relatively humbler at the moment um, which means if you can get equity right now uh, your upside is much higher of the bull comes right. so harkit do you think that in 2023 our college still matters if you want to get a job in tech any job can it might um, because you know okay. companies have criteria as google facebook won't hire if you have not if you don't have a basic degree if you want to get hired out of india let's say the us japan um, southeast asia then Uh, the bare minimum requirement for a visa is that you have a degree so because of these uh, archaic practices which depend more on your on a piece of paper and less on your skills it will matter um, but when it comes to remote jobs freelancing your skills are the only thing that matter so um, i don't see any downside to going to college if you don't have attendance that's great that way you get that piece of paper for like rainy days like for example recently i moved to japan and i got 5 points because i i went to college uh, or like a tier 1 college versus if i would have dropped out uh, for like whatever reason i want to do because you don't know where a life is going right in the next few years and at least for the next few years degrees will hold importance especially for like visas or uh, tier 1 companies or like fan companies mm-hmm. so it ends up mattering but if all that you're looking for is a skill based job it does not matter no one asks for your degree knows what an iit is people don't understand tier 1 tier tiers that we have created in india um so for most practical purposes you will be fine right that makes sense acha akhir bhai in 2023 if someone wants to start their tech journey wo just college mein aaye hain unko tech journey apni start karni hai so what technology should they try So there's a standard answer to this uh, unless you're a prodigy and you want to go down some specific special route uh, usually the suggestion is you either choose javascript or python because there are some benefits uh, these languages provide they throw less errors at you during compilation and for that reason uh, you don't get overwhelmed you can build some simple project and you get minor dopamine hits which are slightly harder to get in language like c++ or rust so initial sort of advice always is to start with one of these two languages and build basic projects uh, be consistent is the sort of biggest thing do it for 21 days do it for 30 days keep solving basic javascript puzzles for 30 days and then you sort of do your 0 to 0.1 journey of acha now i can at least code and i also like coding because i've been doing it for the last 30 days and then from there the journey is sort of a little more what do you mean when you say be consistent matlab kya every day coding karna ya fir ek time period ke liye coding karna every day is probably the better answer na ki you know do it for 8 hours of uh, or like x hours a week um and 
I don't think if you sort of tell yourself, if you create a timetable and you know, कि हाँ मैं सुबह नौ से ग्यारह तक coding करूँगा, that works. It just inherently happens that you know you feel like waking up and you feel like coding. Um, so now that will happen only if you sort of uh, have genuine interest in the technology. So again, find interest um, and then coding every day will just be an outcome. Awesome! Thank you so much, Harkirat, for joining me here today on this podcast and sharing your insights and experience with my audience. I loved it. Thank you so much. Awesome! Yeah, thanks for having me.